Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Happy Friday. So I want to come on here and talk about another situation, honey, that's going down with Monique. As I promised you guys early in the week, we're going to be doing a green room show. So if you guys want to come, definitely come to Spotify Live. I go live at 6 o'clock. I want to hear y'all's opinion. Okay, it's time to sip that tea and interact with your girl. But if you guys do not know, this Monique drama is getting more and more out of control. Yesterday, Lou Nell went on the Ricky Smiley show, and she talked about, you know, how she felt about the situation. And she was very professional about it. You know, she was very professional about it. She didn't necessarily throw Monique under the bus. But you can tell a lot of people like Lunell and others have been rooting for Monique. But at this point, people feel like, you know, Monique needs to learn how to handle her business in private. That wasn't the time and place for it. So I want to go ahead and play you guys what Lunell had to say. Also, Steve Harvey spoke about the situation today as well. So I want you guys to hear both sides. Check this out. So, so what were your thoughts on the video um, of Monique on stage and what happened in Detroit? To be completely honest, as I started watching it, the the word "here we go again" came came into my mind. I, you know, I really have been pulling from Monique this whole time, and I had told everybody, I said, you know, everybody goes down, but everybody gets up. And somebody's going to uh, give her a job. She's going to do something incredible. And she's going to be on everybody's tongues again. And that's what I truly believed when 50 came out and said he was going to have Monique join Black Mafia family. Then Lee Daniels came with his too much, too little, too late apology. Only after he heard about 50 mess with Monique, then Lee came back, double back. So I thought that everything was going to be good. Personally... I couldn't care less about this funk because it seems very ego-based to me. Um, uh, you know, I have been on shows before where the order or the lineup may not have been. I, I thought it was ridiculous because, first of all, I dare anybody to follow me, first <laughs> of all. But um, I, I have been on shows with maybe uh, what I thought was po possibly a... Uh, not as experienced or less a known comedian. And then, you know, if it don't affect my money, uh, I will just go out there in whatever order you put me in, smash and let you see what you can do. But what I would say with this situation seems more promoter based than it does. Well, I'm not following her. Well, let me go first. Dia came up with paperwork that said he was headlining. But then Monique came up with paperwork that said she was headlining. So the fishy mm. work, to me, seems like it is promoter-based. Right. And that it should not have been personally based with your fellow comic, you know? These promoters can do shady things. Sometimes they messy. They might want to pit somebody against each other. And then it did. But actually, Monique's fight is not our fight. You understand? Why involve us every time you got a problem? Because, mm. frankly, after so many problems, we just... I'm going to speak for myself. After so many issues publicly, I'm just not interested in hearing it anymore. It's sort of like the, 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 the you know, the boy who cried wolf. Um, now, she makes a lot of good points a lot of times. But right now, I'm like, I'm like, I'm over the anger and the anger is so palpable that, 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 you know, bringing us into that is like somebody watching somebody get beat across the street and it's not really a fight. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. It's, it's, it's uh, too much for me And I'm not going to be involved in it And I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to speak on it again Except for your show Rick. So I'm sure everyone's heard about this by now But let me refresh your memory just in case Friday night, D.L. Hughley and Monique 
were both booked for the Comedy Explosion at the Fox Theater in Detroit, okay? So now during the show, fans were blown away after Monique delivered a profanity-filled rant on stage mentioning Hughley by name. She was angry over a contract dispute after she thought she was supposed to headline the show. She was fed up with the disagreement. She took to the stage to let the crowd know her true feelings in a 10-minute long rant. I (laughs) could care less than her (laughs) about what you think about me. Because clearly, clearly, I'm not your problem. You know what? And and anyone who knows me, Mm. who really knows me, can't even make that statement. Now, you, that's, you trying to sound profound now, but really, girl, girl. Why do, why do we keep cool. doing this to each other? Why, why, if you got an <laughs> issue with me, come talk to me. But why do we yeah, have to I, lash out so publicly like this to each other? It just you, it just drags us all down at the same time, man. It's, I don't get it. I just well, you know what? And, and you're right. You're right, Tommy. And usually, you know, Steve, you've had your your instances and, and you know, w- with Monique and with situations like this. And we always tell you and you always take the high road and don't comment. You know, you don't you just let it stay out there. You don't give a comment life. Well, I guess, you know, it's the holiday and uh, D.L. Hughley had time. Uh, he took to Instagram and hit back at Monique. He said, all you have to do is check the order of names on the ticket stub from last night and you'll see who's confused. Against my better judgment, over the objections of my team and four other occasions where I said no, I decided to take a chance and work with Monique. He then questions if Monique herself is the problem at the center of her many public disputes. Oprah was the problem. Tyler Perry Perry was the problem, DL says. Charlemagne was the problem. Steve Harvey was the problem. Lee Daniels was the problem. Netflix was the problem. Now it's my turn. At some point, it can't be everyone else. It's you. Lesson learned. Mm. It's too much. Unquote from DL. Well stated, too. Well stated. Yeah. 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 Classy way. Classy way to respond. No and you insults. could tell he didn't even want to get no. into this. You could yeah. tell that because we, yeah. you know, we know him too. You well, could tell the that. sad part is he's headlining the show. He comes on next. Yeah, and, and you go on this rant. You go yeah. on this rant before he even gets on stage about him. And, That's yeah. really crazy, man. And our mission, and I don't even do stand up anymore. But when I did it, I was pretty good, and I always <laughs> understood the, the mission. The mission is to entertain the audience that pays you money. First of all, no one knew anything about this contract. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody. Not a hosting it. Let me say this. You know about your own contract before you get where you're going. How long? You know, you completely know what's going on. Let me tell you something. I know exactly what I'm making. I know when I'm going on. Mm. I know everything about mm. what my job before I yeah. get there. So exactly. this is not a shock before I walk out there. Oh, I'm first. I'm second. I'm third. Well, I didn't yeah. know. You know exactly when you are. We mm. have radio mm. contracts. We know. We, exactly. we get it. Yeah. We, yeah. You know, you're right. And, here's, and, uh, here's what I ventured. I bet you happen. Her management, mm-hmm. whoever he is, simply stated, I got this gig, you co headlining I promise you that's what was told. You're so co headlining That was incorrect information. And that was that? incorrect information because oh, Dio okay. put that contract online. He was 100% headliner. Ooh, his receipt co- was long. Co headliner <laughs> affects the money. If mm-hmm. you're co-headlining, you're going to get the same cash. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. you know, you're not selling the same tickets. So, and, and D.L. is aware of his position in this whole thing. And D.L. The people- was the headliner. And could have, maybe when you got up there, maybe the marquee at the Fox read, mm-hmm. strangely, I don't know. I didn't see it. Maybe uh-huh. your management told you you were co-headlining, and when you got there and you didn't get a headliner building, it it triggered you. But the audience doesn't know any right. of this. Right. 
And the reason right. Dio had to show the contract was because the whole 10 minutes was about the contract. And why are you mad at DL? Why why aren't you mad at whoever told you you were headlining? Yeah. That's the part that's really troubling. It's got nothing to do with DL. No. You, you yeah. do your paper, you he does his paper. Damn thing. Don't you sign your contract? Because I signed mine. Yeah, signed yeah mine. we Hello. also have to sign a contract. All right, so you guys just heard what everybody had to say. And I think for the most part, everybody has had a logical response to Monique. Now, the way you're supposed to handle things, especially when it comes to business or things that are beyond your control, when you're put into a situation unexpectedly, you should handle it like how Chris Rock did. Chris Rock could have, you know what I'm saying, stood his stance and been ready to box Will Smith. He could have chased his ass down that stage and slapped him in the back of the head. But Chris Rock didn't do that. He basically relied on emotional self-control. He composed himself after being slapped in front of the entire world, basically, because this ended up being global news and still maintained a professional manner. And that is what Monique should have done if this was really about the contract, which I said on my latest live stream. Now that more information has come out it, to me, it's not about the contract because. Again, the way she came off on that stage, hooping, hollering, going off, you know, just being extremely vulgar. I had assumed that her and DL had gotten into it backstage and he was disrespecting her and saying that he was the headliner and this is his show. But they never even talked. They weren't even around each other. He came at a separate time. She came at a separate time. So to me, this was not about the contract. And Monique's behavior today is showing me more and more that it's not about the contract. So now this is what happened today. Monique decided to post on her page a video of D.L. Hughley. He did an interview about Bill Cosby. This was about maybe three, four years ago on the Sway in the Morning show because I watched this interview. Um, and he talked about his situation with Bill Cosby and how when men get to a certain level or people in positions of power, um, it could be entertainment, it could be pastors, priests, um, after a while, they seem to think that they're beyond reproach and even people treat them like they're beyond reproach. So I'm going to read to you guys what Mo posted this morning. She posted the videos and then she says, this is based upon DL's own words that you heard at real DL Hughley. When you said, how can DL's wife suck the peen of a coward? This is what I meant. When my husband and I say we have to fight for little girls coming up behind us, you see DL didn't believe his own daughter over a friend because he seemingly liked his friend more than he loved his own daughter and didn't want to be bothered by the inconvenient truth. This highlights why the black woman isn't believed. And when she publicly speaks about her trauma, what does the black woman and his DL's Black wife have come in. Watch who stands with this man. And you're looking at the same ones who will sit down when our sisters are being attacked. I find it funny that DL will call out Ice Cube, Kanye, Riza Islam, Angela Staten, myself, etc. But he won't call out the names of the person that violated his daughter. This is what happens for people who said, I just need to let things go. P.S. Thank you. Amor S. We love us for real. Sydney Hicks, Monique Hicks. Now, this is my issue with that situation. First of all, whoever touched his daughter, that is not D.L. Hughley's story to tell. That is his daughter's story to tell. And for Monique to try and gaslight and use this situation as a black man versus black women thing and black women aren't protected because of this situation. If you guys watched the full interview this was DL being honest and taking accountability as a father. And do you guys understand how much this happens around the world where young girls and young boys will come to their parents and say such and such family member touched me, such and such did this. And the initial response is you're scared. You don't know what to believe as a parent. And some parents don't believe their kids right away. You know, they want to get to the bottom of it. They want to know, you know, are they dreaming? Are they making this up? You know, because nobody wants to have that uncomfortable conversation. You know what I'm saying? And he was honest enough to say that, that I was wrong, okay, for not believing my own child because I didn't want to be bothered because it seemed, you know, inconvenient. I didn't want to have to confront a friend. He took ownership to that. And he also basically showed that him as a celebrity and a regular person, he had to, you know what I'm saying, weigh the consequences and, and look into things just like the average everyday parent that works a nine to five. It's very hard when parents have to deal with something like that. He he was my he was he took me to the free clinic. He told me about life. 
And he also was raping his daughter the whole time and went to jail. So it's to me, he's always going to be the dude mm. who who did everybody's do. How come when people do stuff like this, they're always above reproach. Nobody ever believes them. And then it's always a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And it's always in, and and the reason it hits home to me is because my youngest daughter says something happened to her, and because it was somebody I like, I didn't believe her. Mm. And I, I'll never get that back. She'll mm-hmm. never. I'm supposed to protect her, and I'll never get that back that she got. She told her father something, and he didn't do nothing about it mm-hmm. because it was inconvenient. So I, I could see how that could play. Mm-hmm. This, I mean, this to me is just disgusting. This did not need to be weaponized. Okay, the man is apologetic. He admitted his faults. He didn't have to share that. He could have took that to the grave. But he shared that to show that he, as a regular person, dismissed his child's trauma. And he was wrong for that. He took ownership for that. You know how many parents have dismissed their children's trauma and they never take ownership for it? They don't care. They allow their child to keep going to the molester's house. You know, this is just, to me, not a good look at this point. Her posting this. And trying to make this a black man versus black woman thing, to me, lets me know that it was never about the contract. She used that contract as a catalyst to be able to drag DL because she was still in her hurt feelings about things he said about her during the whole Netflix drama. And that is something that she could have spoke to him about before accepting this gig. And because she's getting backlash for her behavior, now that the truth is coming out, that that man didn't say anything to you backstage. He didn't disrespect you backstage. If anything, he gave you another chance when everybody else was like, nah, we're not fooling with Monique. And then you went in on him and just totally disrespected him and threw him under the bus. You know, I had a gig that he gave you a chance to come and perform at. So to bring the daughter into this, you're victimizing this child again. Because nobody saw that interview in the same light. But now you're victimizing that child and she didn't ask for any of this. You know you were wrong for talking about his wife and saying his wife was was messing with a DL coward. You know you were wrong for insinuating that he was gay, but then you came out in your live stream and said that you know that he wasn't gay. Names, nigga, your name is DL. What the fuck does it stand for? Hey, how far you bending over, nigga, on the DL? You fuck with the wrong one? I don't think you're a homosexual man, DL. I was making a joke and I can't believe you got tender. <laughs> well, they, they didn't sound like jokes. I mean, there's, there's a certain delivery for jokes, a certain tone, right? Here's what else you had to say about DL being tender. I can't believe <laughs> DL, Hughley, I can't believe Daryl Lynn, you are tender. Definitely. And that has nothing to do with your sexuality. It has everything to do with your heart. You, brother, you are in your feelings. I cannot believe that, D.L. And that the, for the comedians, pay attention, baby. Pay attention. See, when you run your mouth about other people and you don't know who you running up into and then you get to running into a brick wall and then you want to play victim and fall out and act like you've been damaged, come on. Like I said, I feel sorry for your family. You're, you know you're wrong and you're getting backlash. You don't want to take ownership and you're trying to gaslight people. You're talking about how you find it funny that DL will call out all these black folks that you named. But you too do the same thing. You've caught out Lee Daniels, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry. You've caught out nothing but black people. And remember I told y'all a few videos ago, like a few years ago, why does she have all this smoke for other black people in the industry? But, you know, white comics like Amy Schumer Everything is sis to this and sis to that. But you're not calling out Amy Schumer for stealing Patrice O'Neill's jokes. You're not calling out Amy Schumer for not being funny, for not being funny and stealing jokes from black comedian. When you were talking to Roseanne Barr, it was nothing but respect. And Roseanne Barr has went on tirades against black people. So I just find the whole thing just very contradictory. Okay, t Dom has told y'all months ago One of the reasons I was not feeling Monique is that she's so quick to throw other black people under the bus, okay? She tried to fuck up Dave Chappelle's Netflix deal, Chris Rock's Netflix deal, but then in the same breath, you steadily sitting up here calling Amy Schumer your sister. I caught her out on this months ago. Folks said I was bugging. You're being mean. You're trying to tear down another sister. Meanwhile, this so-called sister has no problem trying to tear down other black people, okay? I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this damn flashback because y'all know I let her pat myself on the back, bitch, okay? I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this flashback of me calling out Monique for not calling out her so-called sister, Amy Schumer. Go ahead and check this out. 
maybe there's something wrong with my motherfucking ears. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm bugging. Let me go ahead and listen to her shit and see if maybe, maybe her stuff is funny. Maybe I just didn't give Amy Schumer a chance. Do y'all know when you go to YouTube and you type in Amy Schumer, before you can even finish typing in her last name, it comes up, comes up Amy Schumer steals jokes, Amy Schumer steals joke compilations, Amy Schumer steals joke compilation, Amy Schumer steals joke from Ellen, Amy Schumer steals jokes from Patrice O'Neill. I mean, it is insane how many jokes this woman has stolen, but I don't see Monique going in on her and saying she don't deserve that money because half the jokes that she's regurgitating, she done took that from somebody else. You know, it's, it's like she's tiptoeing around the whole Amy Schumer situation, but has no problem being loud and, and bold against other black people. So now we got Monique on the news, basically taking up for Roseanne Barr and calling Roseanne Barr her sister in comedy and saying, you know, people talk about Christianity and being a good Christian, we need to learn to forgive Roseanne, you know, because she said sorry. Oh, okay, Monique. Anyways, y'all go ahead and check out this video and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. So when I see my sister who said something out of order, out of line, mm -hmm. she did. We mm -hmm. cannot dress it up. Right. But when I see my sister saying, I made a mistake. So all I would say is to Roseanne, baby, if you are in California right now, you have tickets to the show at the Brea Improv. Okay. Because what I won't do, Bring me some. when someone says they're sorry, and we keep teaching all of this Christianity and all of this forgiveness, but uh -oh. when we write in it, when we write in it, uh -oh. we seem to forget about that. And we seem to walk away from it. So for Roseanne Barr from Monique, I want to say to my sister, I love you. I know you made a mistake. I know you messed up. But I still won't throw you away. I won't put you on the racist list and say, oh, never again. That is my sister. And I think these are the moments that really count. Because I remember somebody asked me, Sam, for, with the situation that I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And my, they were asking my husband about it. And they said... Really, Monique? We keep teaching all this Christianity and all this forgiveness. But when we're right in it, we're not willing to do that. I mean, what about when Tyler Perry was on the phone with you apologizing? You know what I'm saying? And trying to work something out. And trying to work something out between you, Lee Daniels, and Oprah. When it really had nothing to do with Tyler. Not only did you not forgive that man, you then, during the whole Damon Dash and Lee Scamiel situation, ran to blast Tyler Perry's private phone conversation with you and your husband. So where was all this Christian love and forgiveness for Tyler Perry? All right, child, y'all done seen that flashback. That was from like 2018. I've been involved in this whole Monique situation and just watching Monique over the years. Like I said, when I'm proud of her and liking what she does, I will give her props. When she needs to be held accountable, I will definitely hold her accountable. So I find it very interesting that she's blasting D.L. Hughley for calling out other black people that she may agree with or not agree with, but Monique has done the same thing. And I just find that very interesting that she has all this grace for white comics, for Roseanne Barr, for, you know, um, Amy Schumer and all these people. But she doesn't have a lot of grace for her own. She wants grace from other people, but she's not willing to extend that same grace. I think when she was first presented this deal, regardless if it was DL who presented her the deal or the promoter or the club, when she was presented this deal and she knew that DL was going to be there, I think that should have been this time for her, since she was so hurt about what he said about this Netflix deal, even though everybody and their mama had commentary on it, that was a time for her to reach out to him and say, you know what, being that we're going to be on this tour together, I'm hurt. I'm still hurt by what you did to me. And I think at that point in time, they could have had real dialogue and real conversation. And I think DL would have allowed that had she reached out to him privately. Because sometimes people don't even know that you're hurt or that you're upset. You walking around mad, angry with all this baggage. Meanwhile, the person who allegedly hurt you, they're sleeping well every night because they don't know that they hurt you. They might have thought they were just giving their opinion. They were just doing commentary. So I just find that very, very interesting. And I just believe at this point, Monique is gaslighting. She's trying to gaslight and basically deflect because she knows deep down inside this was wrong and it's not a good look. 
Because people want to see you win, Monique. You know what I'm saying? We've been riding for you. But now you're, you're, you're trying to, you know, throw his daughter into the mix when this was not called for. You're bringing up all this personal stuff about this man and his family. The only thing he ever said about you was the Netflix deal, which you made public. You made public. And people have the right to their commentary, to their opinions, just like you had the right as a comedian and as a commentator. So I just find the whole situation um, extremely sad that it's gotten to this point. And the thing that I find very funny about her calling out DL and saying that DL needs to, you know, out the molester. Is this not what she was mad at Oprah for? That Oprah brought her brother who molested her onto the show. This was her whole beef with Oprah, which I respect her for being upset with Oprah because if she asked Oprah not to do that, Oprah still went and did that. That was wrong of Oprah. But now you're doing the same thing, you know what I'm saying, to D.L. Hughley and his daughter that you claimed Oprah did to you that set you off and made you very upset. And now I'm starting to see my mother and my father and my other brother who was my manager. We didn't discuss that, Oprah. And I'm watching my father sit there who was a strong alcoholic. I'm watching him drunk. I'm watching my mother be greedy. I'm watching my other brother, who was my manager, be greedy. I know my family. And I'm watching my brother who molested me sit on this stage, trying to paint this picture of I'm trying to be a help, but now I'm watching the scam. As much as they keep talking, I'm seeing the scam take place. Well, when it was all said and done, Oprah Winfrey calls me. See, this is why me and Oprah Winfrey got a problem. It's still, it's still, it's still there. Until that woman says, let me apologize to you publicly, it'll be to the day I leave this earth. So how do you think his young daughter is feeling right now? She didn't ask to be involved in y'all's beef. She has nothing to do with this. I just don't respect that she has way too many yes men around her and way too many fans that are gassing up her behavior and not holding her accountable when she's wrong. Like I said, you can be a fan of a person, but you can still hold them accountable when they're wrong and when their behavior is unbecoming. But we're going to have a discussion about this, so make sure you tune into my show at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Green Room, um, on the Spotify Live app. They changed the name. Um, you guys will find the links on my social media pages. So call in with your opinion. Let me know what you guys think about this. In the meantime, feel free to leave a comment. Make sure you still subscribe to my channel. Um, hit the like button, child. Make sure you share the video. And I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.